Carapaz and Roglic in particular just never panicked for a second, did they? And there's that understanding from within that little group that it doesn't transmit through the television pictures at all. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think it's, it's easy for us to literally have that helicopter view of things. And uh, it's a perspective that gives us a lot of insight, but is far from what it's like being in the race where you see all these details and you, you're living it viscerally. Uh, and I think when you've got riders like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Carapaz and Roglic starting to battle against each other, that almost takes the wind out of everybody else's wings because they are both Grand Tour winners. One of them is the, they're both in leaders' jerseys. One of them happens to be in the leaders' jersey here. And it's uh, it kind of... Uh, so a lot of credit to Hugh Carthy for having the confidence, but at the same time, oof, there's big guns firing when they start going. And it was really... It was enjoyable to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, Carthy's race, I suppose, deserves... Demands a bit of analysis because... I was immediately that race finished. And actually, he, he, you know, he finished okay, didn't he? It's not like he absolutely blew up once he'd been passed. Not at all. You know, he, no, he did a great race. He, he defended yeah. that, um, the, that initial attack and after being caught he, pretty, pretty well, actually. Um, and really showed how, what potential he's got once again. But the words of Chris Froome down at the start line yesterday did come back to me slightly. And What were they? Well, Chris Froome, I have to say, David, is turning into an excellent television pundit. Ooh, good times. We, Can we bring him on? Yeah, we well, can't replace Pretty Pete. But. We can't replace Pretty Pete. That'd be, um, but, um, but, but if I was Pete Kenyuk, I'd be very worried. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> no, Chris Froome, Chris Froome obviously is going to carry on racing next year, but when eventually he's coaxed into a television studio, I think he's going to be really good. Because he's, um, when he's Brutal. talking... Yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty forthright about Hugh Carthy when Daniel Freeb asked him uh, a few questions. He said, you know, the... the the guy's progress has been phenomenal. And um, in fact, he recalled the first time that he'd seen Hugh Carthy race and um, noted the fact that a lot of people compared the two because they're kind of gangly, aren't they? And they look quite similar. <laughs> That's on exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> but they've also got, Hugh Carthy's got a little bit of the elbows thing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. yeah. So There's nothing scary about them uh, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they look gangly and yeah. But but Froome's exact words were, oh, what a big engine that guy's got. And this is going back three or four years. Um, and he said, and he's, by the way, he's looked great at, on the evidence of what we've seen at the Vuelta so far. But um, he also said that Carthy has got lots to learn. You know, and the, he said that his time trial is still probably his Achilles heel. But even then, you know, there's lots, there's lots to learn um, on the road. And I guess he'll have learned a little bit out of what he did today and, if you were him, would you reflect and say, would you kick yourself slightly and think, oh, the legs were good, maybe I should have just played a slightly more conservative game? Well, that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question, actually, because uh, I don't think so. I think he was offered and he was supported by his teammates in the role of a, a leader. And I think, arguably, that's the first time he's had that at a, a race of this level. And he didn't disappoint. So I, I don't think there's anything negative for, for him to take away from today, Hugh Carthy. I think he rode exceptionally well. There are many, the vast majority of riders who are, who are offered that opportunity in that position who, who don't deliver is probably nine out of 10. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he delivered and he finished fifth, that's not a failure. It's, that was an excellent ride. And he's got to keep doing that and I, I honestly think Michael Woods who, who did deliver I don't think he is going to consider that of being uh, he wasted his time uh, so it's really important that Hugh Carthy now continues in that vein he finished fourth today just look at the results well, he's no, the, finished, no, fourth, finished, fourth in GC yeah he's fourth in GC yeah. at 44 seconds now having started the day 18 seconds down Carapaz yeah. leads by 13 seconds to Roglic yeah. Dan Martin is at 28 seconds in third place still mm. and Carthy drops from second to fourth and he lost 33 seconds, not factoring the, the time bonuses. And you know, you know what, this is an interesting phenomenon as well. This is what happens, I think, with the majority of, of the riders who become, who become champion racers, mm. who win the biggest races. They have this, this moment in their career where, they, where they're given this opportunity. And because of a leader crashing out or because of just a series of uh, circumstances that has put them from being... Uh, Parenthes, like a normal bike rider in that team, a helper domestique, to suddenly 
they're the only rider the team's got to be their leader. And then you've got two choices. You do it and you deliver and then you become a leader or you don't and then you never leave that position. And so for Hugh Carthy, this is now his opportunity to become a leader. And it means that he can't give up now and he's got to keep going throughout this whole race. And, and if he keeps doing that, then that attitude in itself starts to uh, empower you as a leader uh, rather than somebody who just fits, slips back into that role they did before. Mm, mm. 